So the year is currently 934 AD, and we've made 12,364 gold. Oh my god, how did they release this? This is so broken! <laughs> Hello, Auto Wands and Auto Wands from around the globe. So today we have some rather audacious goals. We'll be starting as a tiny count here in Ireland and taking what's rightfully ours, all of Britannia. I guarantee it just triggered so many people already. <laughs> Anyways, how will we accomplish what the actual Irish couldn't way back in 866? Well, by cheating, naturally. You see, I found probably the most game-breaking exploit I've ever seen. <laughs> I can literally generate infinite gold. Oh, I'm excited. So without further ado, let's get into it. So let's start down here. Uh, Ormond, which I guess is modern day Waterford. <laughs> Look at this guy. He seems to be enjoying himself. He literally looks like he's getting ready for Coachella. Oh my God. So our first goal is to be able to take Ormond here and just grab all of Ireland and become feudal in the next 40 years or so. Once we do that, we can exploit this game and become insanely rich. First things first, we need a good wife. And we're insular, so we can get, actually get a few wags going here. Uh, but let's just start with one, actually, because I don't want to have too many kids. This lady's intelligent. Sounds good to me. So let's fire her off. Hello there. And the absolute second thing I'm going to do is declare war against Wales here. Now I know what you're thinking. Ottawa, why would you declare war against Wales if you want all of Ireland? Is it because Wales is beautiful and it has almost three sheep per capita according to recent census data? And my answer is sadly no. Aww. But I'll explain why in a second. So we'll take the capital and that'll give us 100%. So let's just enforce these demands. Beautiful. So what this actually allows me to do is swear fealty to Wessex. And it might not be clear to you now, but just wait, because this move will allow me not only to become more powerful myself, but screw over Wessex in the process. So there are some benefits to being a temporary vassal in Wessex. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. One of which being, I'm somewhat protected from raids and people trying to take me over. Because his military is typically stronger than mine when he's not in wars himself, so people are less likely to raid him and thus me. The other thing is that I can wind up on their council to gain some additional bonuses like additional gold. And finally, you should note that the Irish here are all tribal, but in Wessex, well, Wessex is feudal and that's going to be important. So while I'm still tribal, I'm going to start warring my rather weaker neighbors here because, well, it's quite cheap and pretty easy. So let's declare a war here. We'll grab us a piece of those beautiful Cork and Kerry mountains. And just out of luck, my liege gave me the Steward of Wessex, which is perfect because that'll help our gold income per month. I'm actually so excited to pull off this strategy. I completely forgot to choose a lifestyle. I think I'm just going to head down the wealth focus here, build my gold income, and then reinvest that into my counties. I think that's probably the best strategy. So easy as you like, we'll pick that county up so we can enforce these demands and disband all. Now I'm going to pick up these two counties above me right here. Cool, so those wars were as easy as just running my troops into the capital and sieging it. Now I kind of have to figure out who am I going to attack next? Oh, and it looks like my wife's had a son. What's in a name? With the babe cradled in my arms. Let's name him Dunchad after you. What? My name is Dunchad. Bruh. <laughs> I didn't even realize this. Okay, well, let's look at the kid here. Zeros across the board, but oh, he's got the dwarf trait. Oh, that's actually sick, dude. He's perfect. Now, Dunchad, uh, not the name I want. Mind you, I have literally no idea how to pronounce the accent you here on the U, so... Yeah. But that doesn't matter. In true CK3 cliche, we'll name our player Mini Chad, exploiter of plebs and maker of fat stacks of gold. And uh, my wife looks like uh, she's cool with it. And getting back to it, Conarch looks really weak right now, so I'm going to pick up a little piece and let the border gore begin. Sweet, and with a valuable hostage, we take 100% war score, so let's enforce the demands right there. Now, in the meantime, I'm going to be picking up some buildings in my capital to not only improve my prestige per month, but my gold per month and the quality of my men-at-arms. All right, so I'm sitting at 573 prestige. I've been saving it up. I'm going to pass limited tribal authority, and with that comes the decision to adopt feudal ways through my feudal liege and it's only going to cost me 150 prestige this way is so much easier than trying to do it myself so that was probably one of the biggest reasons for joining wessex so now all i have to do is get a bit more powerful break away from them and hopefully weaken them enough in the process that they blow up into a bunch of different pieces first things first i'm going to declare war on meath up here 
Oh, actually, if I declare war against Meath here, I can declare war for the duchy. And if I'm the size of a duchy and my liege is the size of a duchy, I think I gain independence. Damn. Okay, I can't screw over Wessex, but I think this is probably better for my strategy. So I will declare war on this guy for the duchy. Cool, so we took their one and only county, we can enforce those demands, and we are now independent! Oh, beautiful. I also don't want to keep this little piece of Wales I took back in the day, so we can just grant that away to a random. And I'll give them independence. We got our eyes on the prize here, baby, and that's the Emerald Isle. Once we have that, we can exploit to our heart's content. And I'm gonna go quick through this next little part, because it's all really the same, it's just taking over territory from smaller nations. Cool, we passed the way, but time to play as mini Chad now. First thing we gotta do is find a wife. Oh, and this woman's a genius! Hell yeah, dude! Big brain gang, baby! Oof, and after a little while, she bears me a son. She wants to name him Dunchad again. You can't make this up. Well, let's take a look at him. Damn, he's intelligent. Okay, uh, not a genius, but we'll take it. I think I'll call you Intelli-Chad. Alright, so after a few more wars, we took enough land to make the Kingdom of Ireland. Let's take a look at our throne room. Wow, looks nice. He's even got a little step stool right there. Wow. Okay, so I just realized I spelled IntelliChat wrong. I have a disease for which there is no known cure. Dyslexia. Okay, and after a little while of some pretty boring wars, looks like the last thing we need to conquer is Wessex here. So let's war them now. And I could even call in some allies to make sure it really goes easy. Bro, POV, you're a Catholic from modern-day England, just chillin'. Just taking a lovely stroll down the green and lovely lanes of Kilshandra. When the field starts speaking Gaelic! Ah! <laughs> cool, so we won a bunch of battles, took the war target, and now we can enforce our demands here, and we have all of Ireland. One of the most basic things in this game, but here's where it gets really interesting, and you can exploit it to your heart's content. Once you have a kingdom secure, the first step to pulling off this exploit is to revoke all the land from your current vassals. So I'm going to go ahead and try this here, and they're not going to like this. They'll rise up in a war, but that's totally okay because we'll put them down. So we've knocked them about, we've won the war, and now we can revoke all their titles. Now King Minichad, he's been around the block, and he actually had three kids total. Uh, my son, who's my one and only vassal here as well as these two daughters. Now, for this exploit to work, we're gonna actually have to get rid of these two daughters, so I'll just go ahead and disinherit them. And you know this is a special video because I'm not flat out executing them to secure my line of succession. Bye bye. Okay, so now it's time for the game breaking exploit. In this life, I've gone down the stewardship tree and picked up It Is My Domain, which allows me to have the extort subjects decision. Basically a decision where I can hang my vassals up by their feet, shake them out, and gold will fall out. But this gold is essentially willed into existence. It doesn't actually come out of my vassals' pockets. It just appears. Now, they've tried to balance this by saying you can only extort subjects once every five years. But we'll just see about that. Okay, so I'm going to extort my subjects here and just take whatever gold I can get. And you'll notice that extort subjects is grayed out, and it will be for the next five years. So basically until December 934. Remember that. I'm now going to grant some random lands to a random person. Now we gotta find a good person, somebody that's gonna be a total cuck. Here we go, we got this guy, Albino Jim. All right, so let's grant him this title, perfect. And then I'm gonna turn around to Albino Jim and straight up imprison him right away. Come on over here. As a result, he's not gonna like that, he's gonna try and war me, naturally. And then I'm gonna simply surrender to him. And I already know what you're saying. Ottawa, why are you surrendering? He's only got 94 troops. But just hold on a second, I'm gonna show you. As a result of my surrender, I'll be deposed, and I'll resume playing as the next person in line for my throne. So I'll surrender, and I've been deposed. Excellent. This is important to understand. I'm playing as my son here, King IntelliChad, but my new player heir is actually my father, King MiniChad, who we were just playing as. Because King IntelliChad doesn't have any siblings or children. So if we were to somehow be deposed, we would be playing as our father. 
Well, IntelliChad has already gone up the stewardship tree. I'm going to reset his perks and make sure he picks up it is my domain. So now he can also extort his subjects. And naturally, the first thing I'm going to do is just that. And we'll pick up the most amount of gold possible. And you guessed it, the next step in this nefarious plan is to come right back over to Albino Jim and imprison him. He'll rise up against me, and I'll simply surrender. And again, it's the same effects on this one when I surrender. I'm going to spend some prestige, and I'll be deposed. So we've been deposed, and now we're playing as our father again. And guess what's now available for me as a decision? The extort subject's decision. <laughs> Remember we said it shouldn't be available until 9.34? Looks like we're gonna be hanging our subjects by their feet and shake until the gold comes out. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> now we're gonna take over Britannia with this gold, but not how you might expect. Not only that, but we're going to propagate a true and righteous Irish religion. So basically, this is incredibly broken, and we can generate anywhere between 50 to 150 gold in about six days. So I'm going to repeat this process about 6 billion times and then come back when all is said and done. A few moments later. So I've done this about, I don't know, 15 times. We're at 1100 gold and I'm going to do it again, but you're going to see that when I do it, I get this little pop up saying that no one in my court will support me and therefore they won't give me anything and I can only really get 15 gold out of it. That's really no bother because what we'll do is I'll imprison this guy and we'll actually rally the troops this time. Okay, and after taking his one county, we hit 100% of the war, so we can actually imprison him. And once he's in our prison, we can just go ahead and execute him. Bye-bye. Somebody else will take his place, and the next time I try the extort subjects decision, it'll actually allow me to take 100 gold from him. And I should be able to do this uh, a couple of times, and then when I only get 15 gold out of them again, I just repeat that process. 2,000 years later. So the year is currently 934 AD, and we've made 12,364 gold. And I even took a vow of poverty halfway through just to make it more difficult. Oh my god, how did they release this? This is so broken! <laughs> Royal Court goes beyond tacking on some new mechanics to the already excellent Crusader Kings 3. I wouldn't want to ever play without it. Yeah, seems legit. So I'm going to play as IntelliChad here. I'm going to solidify my power a little bit in Ireland and then wipe the rest of Britannia off the map. But probably not in the way you're thinking. Oh my days! Okay, so our wife has had a son, Kath Malay. Oh, jeez. And let's take a look at him. Boom! He's a genius! I am so excited right now. Kath Malay, though, is just not a good enough name. I got one in mind that's going to knock your socks off. Oh, beautiful. I'm also going to use my gold for uh, pilgrimages so that I can eventually change my religion. And I'm always going to want to go to the exceptionally long one or the longest one possible. All right. A little while later, I've walked the holy path, gained 875 piety. Okay. And now I'm actually going to switch over to the theology focus and make my way right on up to profit where I'll get a minus 50% to faith creation and reformation costs. So the time's come, we can unlock a new dynasty legacy, and now I'm going to pick up a renowned name, mostly because it reduces the mercenary hire cost for us. So the next thing I wanted to do is reform our religion and change from insular Christianity and create a new Christian faith. Now we're also going to name our religion Potatoes. Because if there's one thing I know about the Irish, it's that they love when North Americans talk about potatoes in reference to their culture. They love it and can't get enough. So we're going to change out pastoral isolation for pursuit of power because it'll give us causious bellies against our neighbors. So that'll help us take over Britannia quickly. I think I'm also going to change out vow of poverty as much as I like it for armed pilgrimages, which will reduce the cost of holy wars for us. So let's go ahead and lock this in and potatoes will be our new faith. Create. And that even leaves us with a ton of piety left over enough to found a holy order. Perfect. All right, so I want to play this a bit cheeky. I'm in such a massive amount of prestige debt that I don't think it's smart to be playing as this ruler for much longer. So what I'm going to do, try to imprison somebody uh, like my son here. 
They will not accept that. They're going to rise up against me. That's totally cool. And I will surrender to them. And I'll be deposed, which is totally fine. And I'm now going to play as my son. All right, so it's time we set our eyes on the rest of Britannia. We've been waiting patiently, and now's our time to shine. And I think I'm going to declare war on Wales. They look particularly weak. All right, so I've just about seized the capital. Perfect. Let's go ahead and take care of their armies now. Looks like they're trying to hide from me. Oh, perfect. And with that little battle, we take 100% war score so we can enforce the demands. And that is the first little chunk of Britannia. Hey, I got you with that one, eh? <laughs> got <he. laughs> Bro, you totally checked your Discord. Don't even lie to me. Okay, so I apologize. Sorry about that. That was a mean trick. If you're liking the video, you're enjoying it, you're laughing, why not give the video a like and maybe hit subscribe? It's completely, totally free, and it helps me out so much. Okay, sorry about that little interruption. Back to completely annihilating Britannia as the Irish. Quice here looks pretty weak, so they're probably my next target. So let's declare war against them. It looks like it should be a pretty easy clap. So we take the capital again, and with that, a valuable hostage. Easy as you like. So I think uh, Cornwall over here wouldn't be the worst target of war. Let's declare war against them. Awesome. And uh, we just took the capital again and we got another valuable hostage. My days, we're getting lucky. That's three of three valuable hostages. We're actually killing it right now. Oof, Mercia looks really weak too. They only have 600 guys and I think they're probably my next war target. Okay, and after taking a bunch more territory and winning more than a few battles, we can enforce the demands up here in Mercia. And the border gore is insane, but it's totally fine because we're picking off people slowly and surely. Oh, and would you look at this? I have my eyes set on East Anglia, and he's already my prisoner. So note he's got a couple alliances here, so I'll execute him. And then the new ruler of East Anglia has no alliances. So let's just declare a nice holy war against him or his duchy now. But oh, we took a valuable hostage, actually, so that's totally cool. Let's enforce these demands and disband all. It looks like there's a lot of individual counties up here that are also quite weak because we took out Mercia and all their allies. I declare war on all three at once, and I think we should be able to clap them up. Ah! They just willed like 6,000 dudes into existence through the Holy Order. Ugh. Good thing we have like infinite money because we'll just use that. And we took the county, so that means we can enforce the demands up here. And their Holy Order was absolutely futile against a massive amount of mercenaries. Who would have figured? So I've recently employed this man as my executioner. And if you take a look, there's a lot of red around, meaning there's low control. So I'm just going to grab one of my prisoners that I can't ransom off and publicly execute him. And what this does is increases the control in any counties that I personally hold. Now, if we compare the reds from before and after, you'll see it's a little bit better now. And having higher control increases my gold per month a little bit. So that's a way I can get a little bit more control for free, essentially. So Jorvik looks particularly weak. I'm going to declare war against them for the Duchy of Jorvik. So let's do that. Yeah, and I was right. We just took that one county and that gave us 100% war score. So we can enforce these now. And that is it. Awesome. Okay, okay and we've had war declared on us for the Duchy of Hawaii. We'll rally the troops here. I might have to do an old school smackdown walk up on him. All right, looks like we'll win the first battle. And we took a valuable hostage in that one. Oh, how lucky to, am I getting tonight? I'm going to enforce these demands. So we got a cultural fascination of the Onager. Oh my days. I've been waiting for this for literal ages. Okay, so now I'm going to go in. I'm going to disband all my men at arms that are not armored footmen. Raise my armored footmen to five of five. I'm going to build one, two Onager units and three armored footmen units and max them all out. Now that did cost me a little bit of gold, but the reason I'm going with only onagers and armored footmen is if you look in all of my holdings over here, I always have the wooden barracks. And what that does is increase the heavy infantry damage, and that'll make my armies a lot more elite and a lot stronger. I think going after Wessex wouldn't be the worst idea. So I guess I'll hit him with that straight up reverse Uno card and war them for this little duchy down here. Bruh, you gotta be kidding me. I got 100% on the first battle and it's because I took this guy again. This guy is terrible in battle. Is he brave? Oh, he's brave. So that means his likelihood of dying in battle and I think being captured is increased. 
actually dumbfounded by the amount of valuable hostages I'm capturing tonight. All right, so we also have the option to make some titles, namely the Kingdom of England, because we hold so much of it. So let's do that. And we can also make the Kingdom of Wales. So our power is just multiplying here. So there's a ton of little counties up here with like a very small number of troops. So I'm going to take care of them all and just start amassing land here. Okay, so we've taken pretty much all of Ireland that was super weak. Now it's going to get a little more difficult. Now the enemies we're going to be facing are going to be a little stronger. So we have to kind of pick and choose our battles here. These guys down here only have a thousand dudes. So that's probably my best shot. And I believe they're a full duchy. Yeah, they're a full duchy. So we'll be able to take them over all at once. Okay, and we're just missing one... Is this game all pop-ups? Is that, is that the whole game? Is it just pop-ups? Like, every time I want to do something, there's just a pop-up? Is that it? Is that the, the game? All right, we took every county here, so we can enforce the demands now. Perfect. Now I'm going to look over to Wales here. They're seemingly quite weak. Okay, so it looks like we actually have somebody with claims over all of Wales here, so let's do that. All and again, we took a valuable hostage when we grabbed the capital. So we can enforce the demands at 100% here. Perfect. And this becomes ours as well. So it's time we attack these heathens up here. Now it looks like they have more than one duchy. So I'll holy war them for the kingdom of Scotland. I don't think that's going to be too big of a deal. Okay, and with that last battle there, we can enforce our demands. Perfect. So they're done and dusted. We don't have to worry about dealing with them anymore. So we now own all of the north up here. We just need to pick up Northumbria and Navarra, and we should be good. Just for the absolute sake of time, I'm going to declare war on Northumbria. I'm going to invade their whole kingdom, because just why not? Same thing down here. I'm going to declare war on them for their duchy. Now you're thinking I'm going to be overspread, and I will. I'm just going to use a bunch of mercenaries. So I'll put all my mercenaries to the capital up here, and then down here, I'll raise my real army. I just want to mention that I developed this strategy based on strategies I saw these guys develop. They're both really nice guys and criminally undersubbed. Uh, what? It looks like they just called in some more troops. Bruh, they just got 6,500 troops from a holy order and 500 mercenaries. That's rough. Uh, well, two can play at that game. I'm going to hire my holy order of St. Patrick here. And you know what? Why don't we grab a handful of mercenaries? Wouldn't be a bad idea, right? And let's send all these boys to meet up right by there, guys. Oh, perfect. And we're just going to smack them up completely. So uh, all we should need now is probably one more territory, and we'll take the dub up here. Perfect. 100% war score here. We can enforce demands. And we're just waiting up here. We need to take one more little piece of territory. And there you have it. With a valuable hostage captured, We've got 100% war score so we can enforce our demands and disband all. Would you look at that? That is a thing of beauty. I hope you enjoyed learning how to exploit CK3 and absolutely abuse it. And if you want to learn how to revive Hellenism in CK3 for only 250 piety, well check out the video on screen right now. And if I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. It's the king of all kings, the one of all ball pulling strings. If you want a war, then you take you a swing at us. But yeah, you'll be the one to crack like a piñata. This woman all in my gold like I don't want lottos. No, I ain't being not a bad dude. We can take her to the field and proceed to win the battle. Take the mantle, horses getting straddled. Hey, it's a king's crusade. It's a king's crusade. I'm living my life.